So for the past few weeks, my project has been working on something known as the modular coil, a modular coil that can be used in motor and generator projects. Over time, I've been working on improving this. So we have the V1 and the V2, and soon there will be a V3. However, today I wanted to talk about the rotor design that I'm going to be using when I make a generator using my own module coils. So without further ado, let's get into this video. The rotor I plan to use with my module coil based generator design is based off of my bean generator rotor with a few slight modifications. A core problem with the bean generator rotor design was its inefficiency, mainly because of how it was constructed. One thing is that it has this material here around the rim of the rotor itself, and that sort of makes it so that the rotor magnets aren't as close to the stator as they potentially could be. And this hinders the, you know, the amount of magnetic flux that can be induced from the rotor because the magnets aren't getting as close to the coils. And gaps between the rotor and the stator, uh, especially air gaps, aren't ideal because air is a pretty efficient magnetic insulator, which obviously impedes the performance of a potential motor or generator. By contrast with the rotor that I'm going to use for my modular coil generator, I've made a few modifications that will alleviate this. Firstly, I've made it so that the magnets are actually positioned a little bit closer to where the stator coils would be. And also, I've added these gaps here so that more of the magnets are exposed to the actual stator coils. These bottom sections here that I, I made thinner to try and reduce the amount of material between the stator and the rotor uh, magnets, I actually had a lot of trouble getting this to print correctly. Initially there was a lot of gaps and it took me uh, quite a lot of trial and error in uh, FreeCAD to get this to print right but I'm finally glad that it turned out correctly. And as a little side note, this is why I love printing on a flat glossy surface like glass, is because you can actually make your bottom layer look almost injection molded. I mean, look at how shiny that is. But aside from some slight modifications and some material efficiency saving that you can see at the top here, the rotor is actually basically the same as my bean generator rotor. One of the biggest similarities is actually that this is still a hallback array rotor. Now what a hallback array is, if you don't know already, is it's basically a way of more efficiently using your magnets in a rotor. Now traditionally in a rotor design you have alternating magnet poles, so you, you have one magnet south, one magnet north, south, north, south, north, etc. Now that's very simple in terms of making, actually, produ you know, actually producing rotors. It's, it's a very simple process to do it that way. However, you're not using, you're not getting the most out of your magnets. The aim of a hallback array is to make more efficient use of your active poles. So while a normal rotor might look something like this, I'm just drawing it linearly so that you can see it you know, a bit more simply. So while a normal arrangement of magnets might look something like this, in a hallback array, it's a bit different. So in a hallback array, you might have a, pretend these squares are magnets, you might have a magnet that has a north pole and a south pole and the north pole is facing outward and then the next magnet would actually be turned sideways so you would have your north pole on this side 
and you would have your south pole on this side. And then the next magnet would be arranged so that the south pole is facing outward and the north pole is facing inward. And your next magnet would be arranged so that your south pole is facing that this way and your north pole is facing that way. And the next one, your north pole is facing outward and your south pole is facing inward, etc, etc, etc. It makes your active poles larger and your inactive poles that are not being used smaller. And that's how it increases the efficiency of a rotor design. So now it's actually time to assemble the full rotor itself. So as with the beam generator rotor, this comes in two halves and when the magnets are in their slots these halves can be joined together and secured with some screws so firstly we're going to slot the magnets in here i already have uh, marked out the poles on them so this is the north pole of this magnet and this will just slot right into there and that's our first magnet in its slot just like that and because this is a hallback array what I've done is I've taken our second magnet here and I've put it in its slot so that the north pole is facing the north pole of our first magnet which is facing outward and that is starting to you know compose our first large hallback pole that's going to be you know, actually working the stators and our smaller south pole is going to be facing inwards here. However, I can't actually put these into their slots on camera because as you can imagine, opposing poles don't want to attract, they don't want to go together and so it's quite hard to actually put them in there. So off camera, I'm going to put all of these magnets into their slots and get back to you. Now that we have all of our magnets in place, it's time to add the other half of the rotor. And to do that, all we have to do is we have to slot this onto there so that, so that it matches like so. So that the coupling screw holes line up with each other. And all we have to do now is we have to push these together and we will have a true hallback array made using a 3D printed rotor design. And to secure the two halves together, all we need to do is add a couple of screws and nuts and we are golden. So here is the rotor on the shaft. I can't really do some testing with it today because it's not actually mounted to the shaft. I just wanted to show you what the rotor looks like fully assembled, but once I actually mounted to the shaft when I'm building my generator, that's when you'll see the tests come out along with it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this insight into the next part of my module coil based generator project. If you like what you see here and want to see more in the future, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you share this content, it helps get stuff like this out there and helps raise awareness of valuable knowledge about energy generation and how to make yourself a little bit more energy autonomous. Anyway, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. STLs in the comment section.